Yeah. The pool, alright? Trying to sit like a lady. <laughs> I'm just chilling. Where am I doing? But, uh, I gotta ask. So, I'm from North Carolina. I remember when we used to, to I remember when the hype movement first started, you know? And I'm like, <laughs> people going dumb me. And then I heard the song like go dumb, dumb, dumb. dumb, dumb. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? And we, we was rocking big white tees back then. And you okay. all were too. And y'all was like ghost riding the wheels. We had your bows. We had your bows? Yeah, we had your bows. We just, we just wasn't uh, ghost riding the wheels. Oh, uh, yeah, that's fun. Yeah, I bet it is. But I heard some people die doing that. <laughs> I should be dead. <laughs> okay, well, another blessing. <laughs> Every time. Yeah. So, so what was it like growing up in the hyphy movement, and you know, how was open? How was open back then? It was hella hyphy. <laughs> I was uh, like a preteen around that time, so my favorite thing to do was be bad. <laughs> Um, I would jump out the window pretty much every Friday night, thankfully, meet up with my girls, find a side show, and we would just be out there being fast. Like, it was very dangerous. I would not recommend it for your children, but, um, <laughs> but it was fun to us. I think the best part about the hyphy movement was, like, it gave us something to feel a part of. So you know, like every weekend, you can go to a side show. You know, you're gonna just be acting a fool with people your age. Again, very dangerous. But um, the best part about it is, like, you can literally be walking down the street and you can just, yeah, you know, real quick, and somebody just start dancing or something. <laughs> um, it was hella fun growing up in Oakland during the hyphy movement because I, to this day, still listen to some of that music, and it'll get me hella pumped for work. Or whatever, cause it's just good ass music. <laughs> yeah. What, what like what's what song? Like what's what song you wake up to? Oh man, this wasn't really part of the hyphy movement, but I swear my theme song is Too Short Getting It. Hey! 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 Every time. Hey, hey, DJ, do you got that? You got that? Hey! Don't play it now, but like search for it, and I'm gonna turn around again. I want you to give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. Okay. I swear, when he say like I got all my game from the streets of California, hey. man, no high school diploma. I'm like this nigga know me personally. <laughs> he know who I am, cause that's the hustle, you know. That's what it's about. So yeah, that's that's definitely my jam. It's a couple other ones. Um, I still go crazy to function because you just can't resist. And like, how could you resist? Yeah, like, function, we don't even say function back home, but y'all <laughs> throw function on everything. I'm just trying to have a function. I'm like, you know, oh, man. Function. Function. I'm not even about to do this <laughs> This is about tech. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's about your life, though. Yeah, you know, I mean, we're going to talk about tech. You know? I, had a, I had a fun childhood, all things considered. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Cool. So I wanna I wanna talk more about your parents' drug addiction and particularly about how did you actually overcome that? Like to have two parents uh -huh. and then you know you're here now, right? Yeah. Like how like talk us through like how did you do it? Yeah, so basically um from the age of about up till the age of about five or six, both of my parents were addicted to drugs. And I don't feel like ashamed to say that shit. It just is what it is. Um but it taught me a lot about like people and so I just I kind of like learned early on like to follow my instincts to follow my first mind I understood how to like see how people were moving it made me very independent from a very young age um, I often had to like help out with my younger siblings um, but yeah like a lot of times it really just came down to me finding space for myself which I don't I can't think nobody but whoever's up there because I, I recognize that like some don't feel right I'm gonna just move over here you know so a lot of that um, I spent a lot of time reading and just like blasting music in my headphones or whatever I could get my hands on um, once my mother got um, clean things got a little more stable but she she didn't finish high school so she couldn't guide me a lot about uh, goals or ambition, uh, anything like that. I had to really figure all that out myself. Um, thankfully, you know, I always had a big ass mouth. <laughs> um, so if I had questions about anything or if I was curious, I, I would find a way to get the information no matter what. Um, definitely one of the early like Google adopters. <laughs> gotcha. So like who, who were your early role models? Oh, where, where are they in? 
Honestly, I, this is gonna sound hella, hella crazy to say, I didn't really have a ton of role models growing up. Maybe my grandfather, he was one of the only people I knew that had his shit together, if I you know, could say that. But everybody else, I mean, like to put it in perspective for y'all, like my grandfather had a house in West Oakland. It was a two-story duplex. Hey. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was uh, the family who wasn't on drugs at the top and the family who was on drugs at the bottom. But my grandfather always tried to make sure that the top was a safe space, you know. So I would spend a lot of time over there. I grew up in the East, but I did spend time in West Oakland when my grandfather um, had his house. Um, yeah, I would say there was hella rumors about him being like a millionaire. So we would go through his shit, look for treasure. Like, it was fun to be around him. <laughs> Even though it was a lot going on right downstairs. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so, okay, you make it through that, right? So who put in your mind or what was the process for saying okay you're graduating high school and then going to college um so i don't know if some of you remember there used to be a high school in east mont mall it's called like yeah. u prep yeah. <laughs> hold on, hold on. you said a high school in a mall inside of east mont mall yeah. i've never heard of that um that's some big stuff it was it shouldn't have been there um it really shouldn't have been there. Hold on, were they, they just teaching y'all about retail or something? Like, huh? <laughs> you got jokes. We're supposed to be getting educated, okay? It's supposed to be a continu it was supposed to be a continuation school or like an alternative school, pretty much for badass kids. Um, and my cousin went there, and so I was like, I want to go to school. My cousin goes to school. Um, and I convinced those people to skip me to the 11th grade by proving that I can, uh, like, uh, state the Pythagorean theorem, and so they were like, "You're in eleventh grade." Hello, hello, hello. Y'all, know what the Pythagorean theorem is? Yeah, I don't even know how to say it. Right. Right. So, like, hey, like, what's the Pythagorean theorem? A squared plus b squared equals c squared. What? Math. <laughs> 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 Y'all know what the Math. <laughs> Um, and so once, like literally, I was like, I like said it. They're like, okay, you're in eleventh grade now, so you better start thinking about college. <laughs> and I was like, what's that? <laughs> um, that was the first time anybody brought it up. Eventually, I went to a real school and they put me back in tenth grade. Um, but that, but that was the first time I ever heard about college. I was pretty much like getting ready to get out of high school. Yeah. And so um, from there, I tried to kind of figure out on my own what it was. And I actually met a guy who was on his way to college, and he was like, I'm about to go up to Sacramento and do it. You want to roll? And I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Young and dumb, but I mean, that's how I got there. I mean, that's how I got there. I, I followed a guy. So he showed you the way. Yeah, he was on his way to college. I was like, sounds cool. So, so I like, roll. roommates or something? Or? Nah, he was my boyfriend. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm roommates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's how I started. Um, going to school up in Sacramento for finance. Cool, cool. So yeah, so why did you choose my, well, you said your your uncle. Yeah, yeah. so oh, let me take y'all a step back. I've always been a hustler. I always made money. That's yeah. I, all, I had to, right? Okay. Um, I would do hair. I would watch kids. I worked in construction for a bunch of summers. Like I can like paint this room, hang these windows, all sorts of weird stuff. Um, but one of my jobs when I was a teenager was working for my uncle's company and he was doing um, credit repair and loan modifications. Okay, so I would literally be on the phone with like mortgage companies and I'm like 12. And I'm like, I'm calling on behalf of my client. Yes, I have authorization. <laughs> <laughs> you, you left that out when we were like at four Friday. You left that part out. Man, I mean, I, it's so much. Like you don't got the time, Corey. <laughs> um, <laughs> a lot of stuff happened. But yeah, that's how I got into finance was um, I was working. Um, I was supposed to be his assistant while he like met with clients. I ended up running his own, his whole office. He just he was like, well, it seems like you've got it down. And I was like getting stuff removed from people's credit reports at like 12. <laughs> she was 12 years old having people get good credit. <laughs> you supposed to be like, come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. I know you're beating her. Hold on. Yeah, that was fun. That's how I got into finance. 
Wow, okay, so you're you're in finance, you're in college, but then something hits you, you had a moment, you're like, well, I don't know why I'm so, doing this. So, I'm telling y'all, I just be deciding whatever I want, and I just do it. So, um, I was in college studying finance because I was already, like, sort of, like, making money, doing that, I figured, like, just keep doing this. And um, I had a day, and I, I can't tell y'all where this thought came from, but I was like, I want to work in healthcare now. <laughs> So I was still in school for finance. Hold on, hold on, pause. Didn't I say like manifestation? That's it. <laughs> yeah. Pay attention. So the first job I got in healthcare while I was still uh, studying finance was actually for the Department of Defense um, at a property called Aerojet. So we had to have like cat cards. It was real official. It was like rockets driving on the property, and we would hear them like test them. It was a rocket testing uh, campus. Um, so I was working full time at that point and going to school and my job because it's the government nothing makes sense I would have to be to work at 4 in the morning and then I would go to school after work at like 12 or 1 or whatever and I don't even know one day I just I got off work it probably was a long day and I went to school I remember it was my Spanish teacher it was like Ash Friday because I remember she had the Ash um, <laughs> And I don't know, she said something to me, and I was just over it. I just got up and walked out of school, and I just never went back. Wow, so <laughs> do you advise people to just drop out of school? Hell no. <laughs> but I would advise you to understand why you're there, because that was the reason I was able to leave so easily, um, is because I didn't really understand. Like, somebody just told me about college. I decided, like, I guess I'm supposed to do this. I didn't have a lot of people talking to me about the benefits, but it's never because I don't think education is important. It's extremely important. I'm always been the type of person to do things my own way. If I want to learn something, I'm, I'm going to learn it, basically. You like, I can figure it out. You want to Google it? I'll Google it. I'll talk to people, whatever it takes. Um, but I didn't understand why I was there. It just seemed like I was kind of supposed to be there. And after a long day of work and Spanish, it was just too much. <laughs> Yeah, so, okay, so you're in Sacramento, you drop out, and you said you was actually working in Sacramento, mm -hmm. and then a boyfriend was working in tech. Tell, tell, tell mm -hmm. us more about that. So I was, um, so one day one of my girls called me while I was still working in healthcare, and she was like, you need to get back into finance. There's money. I got this opportunity um, with Bank of America. You need to, like, send me a resume and come through. And so I send them my resume. And I ended up getting a better job than the one that I applied for. So I was making like, for my age, I think I was like maybe 20, I was making like $25 an hour, something like crazy. Um, so I thought I was set. <laughs> um, but what happened was after like maybe six months or so, um, I just wasn't feeling it. Like something felt hella off. I started getting like desire to move back home and uh, me following. I guess uh, one of my boyfriends came. <laughs> one of my boyfriends came. Hey, like make sure you edit that. <laughs> 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 Cannot be in a promo video. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Take that out. We trying to sponsor, girl. I know. I'm gonna I'm be classy. Okay. Um, it just is what it is to me. But yeah, he came in. Um, <laughs> he came in and he was like, "Hey, I work in tech now. I'm that guy." I could take care of both of us, like move back to Oakland, um, and so I did. And I was deciding that I was going to still work in finance, um, so but I didn't want to stay with B of A. I wanted to go to Wells Fargo, and I know banks are slow, etc. So I submitted my application, and um, I was just waiting for them to call me. I knew they would. I wanted it because it happened. Um, <laughs> Speaking what you want. But um, I was like just googling around, looking at jobs and stuff, and I came across. Um, one of those like really cute tech videos, you know, the ones they make and put on the website, tell you to come work here, it's all colorful. And I had never seen anything like it. And I always been good with computers, technology, etc. And I'm like, oh, what's this? So um, I applied for that job and then I got it. <laughs> cool. So you move you move back here, right? Mm -hmm. um, talk about the changes in Oakland when you came back and how did how did <laughs> Cause this is like way different from the hype. <laughs> it was it was dramatic to say the least. So this job that I got was in Jacqueline Square. It was founded in Oakland. Um, the office is in Oakland, and I'm like the only person from Oakland that worked there. Wow. I I like didn't understand it. Um, I don't know if y'all know much about Jacqueline Square, but it used to be like it's close to the ports. 
So it used to be like we're all like the Portsmouth guy come through there like shipping and handling or whatever and be it'll be a ghost town by like noon. They come out real early and do that. Now it's like coffee shops, people um, that ain't black walking around with babies and it's people on bikes. It was it was, it was dramatic. <laughs> and I was like didn't really have anybody to ask about it because nobody was like working in the same industry as me. Um, but I quickly figured out what was going on. Yeah. Yeah, so so okay, so you're in tech, so how did you learn about cyber cybersecurity? And then <laughs> I guess also too. What is cybersecurity? Because okay. <laughs> that's also important. Good question. Good question. Okay. Um, one of my mentors actually just told me like a couple months ago. He was like, "I think you might be a natural born hacker," because um, just in conversation we were talking about how I used to break into my boyfriend's phones and uh, do I would do it for my friends. I could always figure out people's passwords and stuff. Um, or I'll, I'll just like want to go to something. I don't have no ticket. I'll just walk in. Don't nobody stop me. And, and, and that's like social engineering. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how a lot of that yeah. happens. They're just like, they call somebody up and say, hey, what's your credit card number? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Exactly. So um, I would do stuff like that growing up. I didn't get that that was like hacking or anything. I just he just told me this actually. I thought it was hilarious. Um, but uh, what, how I got into security is I would read. Um, well, first I tried a couple things. So I, I figured I heard at least from Oakland that coding was the way to go. Like if you want to make big money over here now, you gotta code. So I started um, taking classes via a developer friend I knew, and she would do it for free, bless her heart, um, to teach me Python. And I did that for like a month, maybe, and I'm going to kick myself now because I still need to kind of learn a little bit of that. But one day I came in and I was like, um, so I just come to work every day, I look at my computer and I just do this. And she was like, yeah! And I was like, oh. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna be for me. <laughs> but she got, she got to test it out on me. She runs her own coding school for uh, children of color now. Mm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what's, the, what's the name of the coding school? Uh, it's, I think it's called Color Mosaic. I'll let you know. Okay. I'll let yeah. you know. Uh, it's run by a woman named Joy. She's awesome. But yeah, bless her heart. She helped me discover before you might I spent. Bring her to the trap. You might have to. Yeah. You might have to. Yeah. She's been doing this for a minute. You ain't ready. <laughs> um, but yeah, she, uh, you know, thank you for, for her time because I didn't have to spend money to get that information that I didn't want to do this, you know? Um, so then I was talking um, to some people about getting into IT. Like, I was trying to get my tech money up. That's the whole point. I was trying to figure out what works for me, though. And I was trying to glow up. I was trying to glow up. Trying to glow yeah. up. Um, and I would read about the breaches in the news and I would laugh at them. I thought they were hilarious. I'm like, I could do security better than all these people. All you gotta do is stop telling people to click stupid links. Um, all you gotta do is not give people access who don't need it. All sorts of stuff. I would just like laugh at the breaches. It became like a hobby. Um, and if you know anything about me, you know I get bored very easy. And once I was kind of like still into it after a while, I was like, maybe you should think about this as um, a job. But back to your other question about what is cybersecurity, if you were to Google like how to get into cybersecurity, um, it's basically going to say not you. <laughs> it's basically going to say that. I, I remember the day I did that Google search and it basically said you need like a master's in CS, computer science, you need to know like four uh, programming languages, um, you need to understand command line and Linux and all this good stuff. And I remember, I like just put the phone down. I just, I just put the phone down, and I didn't really think about it again for like a little, a little bit later. Um, but me being me, couldn't let it go. <laughs> so what is, what is the command line? How, well, how many programs do we have here? How many programmers? Okay, so y'all know what a yeah. command line yeah. is. They got it's, this. It's basically when you go inside a computer and you code and <laughs> it talks to you. Some of them, it doesn't talk to me, but yeah. 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 Uh, I don't even know a ton of that. But I, I had to learn it, obviously, but don't ask me to do it. <laughs> um, so basically, um, eventually I was like, all right, I'm going to pursue this. And uh, I started talking to people about it. And I mean, I talked to a lot of people that got, man, their eyes would just glaze over, like, get out of my face. Like, I could tell they were not taking me seriously. And I was getting frustrated. Um, because I didn't really have anybody to like kind of help me figure out like what to do 
plus I already knew I didn't want to do some of the things Google said you do in security. So I'm like, I'm trying to get in, but I'm also trying to make my own path. But I'm also like trying to go about this completely out of like left field. Um, but I just kept at it. I just kept talking to people. I started getting on my Googles. Um, I found a lot of uh, free resources for free education. I even paid for some um, videos. Some of them helped, some of them didn't. It's just, just it is what it is. But I was just pretty persistent. Um, eventually, people started to hear me out and take me seriously. Um, and one of my mentors, I call him my security sensei, uh, he uh, was like, maybe it's time for you to start studying for your first cert um, so you can like go all in. Um, and I ended up landing my job a couple months before I even got my cert. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> so, so how did you how did you come across that that role, and how did you actually get into um, So back to me being, uh, I gotta have like a bunch of stuff going on. I get bored really easily. So normally when people start off in security. <laughs> Uh, they start in operations, and that normally means they're like reviewing logs, like tweaking the systems, and I would have happily did that, no problem. I just knew it wasn't my goal. Um, and so I started looking at different types of roles that I would consider entry level, um, and I started coming across the analyst roles and stuff like that. And it was actually a com combination of other roles in security, and I'm like, all right, this is where I'm going to end up, so I'm going to just start applying. Um, but I came across the role at Twilio and I was like, I think this one feels good because it wasn't like any other role that was out there. Um, because, and she gonna hate me for saying this on camera, but she made my job up. <laughs> because she saw a need. There were, um, they were doing a lot of security processes that was taking a lot of resources from other teams in the security org. So she decided to make it its own role. Yeah. And so the job that I do, a lot of people they don't even know, like, insecurity wouldn't even know, like, what I do. Because it's a very kind of new and, for me, exciting job. Um, and so I saw a lot of transferable skills from finance, like, you know, can you solve problems? Can you evaluate risk? Things like that. And I'm like, I can. I absolutely can. So I'm just going to go for it. And I made sure to put, like, I'm getting a start, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Eventually. Yeah, and you said, you said that she just made the roll up, but I feel like mostly rolls. Or just made that's, up. <laughs> that's very true. That's like the hard and fast thing I had to learn um, when I got into tech is I never worked so hard before because nothing was defined. <laughs> and if you bring it up, you better be ready to like work on it and solve that problem. So that that's definitely true. A lot of things are uh, are made up in tech. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So one more question and I'm gonna open up to the crowd. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that just come natural for you, right? Uh -huh. Like how you broke into tech, and even how I came here, I just cold emailed the head, uh, the head of diversity at Yelp, and she referred me, and I interviewed, moved here. Mm -hmm. Right? Those things just kind of come natural for us, right? So, this is my question. Um, so, what are you know? What are what are some things that, if you can think about it, would tell people who are looking to break into tech from a very non-traditional background? And I know it's hard because, like for me, <laughs> like whenever I'm looking at someone who I consider an expert, what I found is that it just best to watch them move, right? And watch how they handle situations, right? Yeah. But I guess some things you can think of top of mind. Yeah, because what if you don't have nobody to watch, you know? Um, I think for me, and I, I think I've told you this before, like, you just kind of got to get your fucking mind right. Like, you got to be serious about what you want to do, and you got to be serious about what that's going to require of you. Um, most of us don't have things handed to us easily. I would, I know it looks all cute, you know, when I talk about it, but I work fucking hard. Um, I went after exactly what I wanted, but I was very specific. It's a lot of things in this world that are beyond your control, but it's a lot of stuff that is within your control. And for all the stuff that's within your control, you better be going out there to win, like, every time. Because you don't have no choice. And if you don't win, that's cool too. You learn, you keep it moving. Um, if you want to break into tech, I think the first thing you got to do is get out your head, because you, you can. There's space for you. I, I it kind of had to learn the lesson quick, like my voice was valuable because I would come up with ideas in a meeting and I'm like, I'm sure somebody thought of this, somebody had to think of this. And I would just be like, how about this? And they'd be like, oh my God, you genius. <laughs> and that would happen a lot. So I'm like, okay, maybe I'm looking at this from a different point of view. 
And once I started speaking up a lot more in the workplace and vocalizing like what I think and what I see from my point of view, a lot of things started to accelerate in my career. I worked a lot to build a lot of processes for these tech companies and it was never easy, but a lot of these companies give you the room to do it. So you gotta just decide, like I'm the person for the job and I'm, I'm just gonna roll with it. Yeah, yeah, and I, I would, to add to that too, I would say one thing that really helped me, and this is part of the reason why I brought her, asked her to speak, is that seeing people who I can actually relate to and actually touch, that look like me, that, I was like, wow, okay, they're doing it, they, he looks just like me, yeah. right? I can do it too, you know, yeah. so. I think another thing you have to remember is like, tech is cool, it affords you a lot of opportunities, you can do some really great and exciting work, you can make a lot of money, but you can never lose sight of your personal goals. Like, why are you here? To me, tech is a tool. Um, I use it to live the life I want to live. I use it to travel. I use it to pay my bills. I use it to take care of like my family. And that's the life I want. If I wanted a life that didn't include tech, I just wouldn't do it. So that's what you can never forget is, you know, you go into the companies, it's exciting. You can have a lot of to do, but you need to stay focused. Um, you can meet great people, but everybody not your friend. You can come to work as yourself. Can you, can you repeat that for me? <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can meet great people, but everybody is not your friend. Um, I know part of our conversation was being authentic at work. I'm, I'm naturally a giggly person, and people are not super intimidated by that. Um, but if you're not, that's cool too. Like, People understand if you let them know, you know what I mean? People only treat you how, you how you let them treat you. So if you decide, like, I'm just here to get my money, like, most people gonna leave you alone as long as that work is sufficient or above. Um, you can't lose sight. Like, everything you do, like, even now, I don't care which job I have, I always try to make sure I'm doing something. I'm trying to learn something that's gonna take me to the next level. So I would encourage you, you know, get in tech. I promise it, it will help you. I know a lot of black people, some in this room that don't have no debt because of tech. They are living debt free young black people. And that's not something we talk a lot about in our community. And this is a tool you can leverage for that. But you, you gotta stay focused on you. I think all of this stuff is, um, is very superficial sometimes. And you know, it's a lot of hype. But at the same time, if it's gonna be some hype, we need to be in the hype too. And we need, our people need to come. Because this is our community. Yes. And that always just blows my mind every time I get into any new job and there's nobody there that's from here. So I'm trying to bring as many people as I can with me and I would encourage you to do the same. Oh yeah, that's why we started the Trap House. Woo! Tech Trap House. All right, so we're gonna open it up. We're gonna open it up to questions. I'm gonna walk around. Oh, now you, now you. <laughs>